This is the second page of the 3.3 practice. We're going to call this 3.3 practice part two, in which we are applying our work with slope, point slope form, and intercept form. Problem number four here asks us to, to look at a line that goes through the points 3, 7, and 1, negative 3. So kind of think about a line that would go through the points 3, 7. So let's just say that's here and one negative three, so let's say that's right here, and we, we think about that line, it would look maybe something like that. And so what we're gonna do is find the slope of that line, and so if we kind of graphed it here and thought about the rise and the run, that's fine, but we're actually gonna use our slope formula. So remember, slope formula, let's write that at the top of the page here. So our slope formula, remember, is simply rise over run, but subtracting the y values to get the rise and subtracting the x values to get the run. So if our points are 3, 7, and 1, negative 3, the slope of that line, let's take the second y value minus the first y value, so negative 3 minus 7 is going to be our rise, and then our second x value minus our first x value will be 1 minus 3 for our run. Negative 3 minus 7 is negative 10, 1 minus 3 is negative 2, and if we reduce that fraction, that negatives cancel out, it becomes positive 5 over 1, which is the same thing as 5. So our slope of our line is going to be 5. So in a rise over run, this will be over 1 of 5 if we're doing the, the rise over run part of it. Or at least it would reduce to 5 over 1. All right, B, use the slope of the point 3, 7 to write the equation in point slope form. All right, so once again, point slope form is y minus the y value for our point, which is called y sub 1, equals m times x minus the x value for our point, where m is the slope, x1 is the x value for our point. So here we have our x1 and y1 values, and we have the slope from part A, so we're going to write that in. So y minus the y value for our point, which is 7, equals the slope times x minus the x value for our point. So there we have it. No double negatives there, so we're good to go. C says use algebra to transform it into intercept form. Okay, remember, intercept form is the one that we, oops, intercept the one that we've been using for a long time, y equals mx plus b. So we're going to transform it so it looks like this. Transform it, we've got to do a little bit of algebraic processes here. Uh, first process might be to use the distributive property. And so that would again give us y minus 7 is equal to, okay, so distributive property 5 times x is 5x, and 5 times a minus 3 it's going to be a minus 15. And we almost have it now in intercept form. We'll see like that mx plus b part, but we still have this minus 7, so we're going to undo that by adding it to both sides. Undo subtracting by adding, and now we have y equals 5x negative 15 plus 7 would turn out to be a minus 8, a negative 8. So now we have our equation in intercept form. So the point slope form was this one here, and we transformed it now into intercept form. Once it's in intercept form, now we can see the y-intercept value. So the y-intercept of this equation now we can see is negative 8, or more specifically the point 0 comma negative 8 would be the y-intercept in coordinate forms. The y-intercept is the negative 8 value there. All right, now graph this line using the equation you got in part C. So part C being the intercept form here. So we've got a y-intercept value of negative 8. All right, so remember, graph a line. We graph the y-intercept point first, or whatever point we have. In this case, we have the y-intercept point. And then we use the slope to find the next point on the line. So, 
In this case, our slope is positive 5, so that means that we're going to use our slope of 5, and remember, as a rise over run, we can put it over 1. So we're going to rise 5 from our y-intercept, so up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and run 1. So run positive 1, and so there we have it. So now we can see that this point right here, notice that the coordinates of this point is 1, negative 3, which if we recall back up here, let's see, is one of the points back at the beginning of the problem here. Remember, that was actually one of the points that was on our line. So if we continue to rise 5 and run 1, so up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and run 1, now we have the point 2, 2. Okay, and if we rise 5 again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and run 1, that point right there would be, let's see, 3, 7, which if you'll notice is actually the other point that we started off with. So you'll notice that these two points at the beginning of the problem are actually on our line, and so now we can graph that line by connecting up those points and extending our line past those points as well. Do this as accurately as possible on the active board here. Okay, so now we have officially graphed the line, and we're noticing that all the points from earlier in the problem are on that line as well. Moving down here, we have last couple problems which have our equation in point slope form. We're going to identify the slope and the point. So our slope, remember, is that value right there, negative three, and remember the x1 and y1 values come from the other two numbers. But recall that the numbers themselves are kind of the opposite of what the actual values are because the equation itself, remember, had subtraction signs in it. So if we still see the subtraction sign there, that means that we used to use the point 2. If we see a plus sign here, then that must have been a, a negative 3 to get the minus a negative 3 and turn it into a plus. So again, what you have to remember is what you see in the equation is kind of the opposite of what it actually is. So a minus 2 really means that the x value for our point was positive 2, and a plus 3 here actually means the y value for our point was negative 3. All right, so now let's use that point. So 2, negative 3 would be one point on our line, and then our slope is negative three. So remember, if our slope is negative three as a rise over run, that would be down three and to the right one. So that would be our second point right there. And then again, we would connect those up, extend our line, we are graphing our line. Looks something like that. Okay. On part B, same general idea, we've got our slope, which is 2, and again, we've got our point that comes from these two numbers here and here, and remember, the point that we have is kind of the opposite of what it looks like, so we see an x plus 4, which must have meant the x value was actually negative 4, because if we have minus a negative 4 up here, that's what actually changed it to a plus, and then... We see a minus 1 here, which actually means the y value is positive 1. So let's graph our point, negative 4, 1. And let's use our slope to find the next point. So our slope as a rise over run, if it's a whole number again, we'll put it over 1. So we'll rise 2 and run 1. Wanted to do that again and graph another point, that's fine. All we need to graph a line though is two points. So once we have those two points, we can line them up, use our straight edge or ruler, whatever we happen to have close by. Oops, that one just didn't really match up very well. Let me try that one more time. Sometimes in the active board, it just doesn't sync up very well. We're gonna go with that. Just point, put arrows on both ends, and now we have both of our lines graphed from the point slope form. 